What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we are for a little while and continue to play Scavenger SV4 because I like it. Uh, we're on a planet right now, soaking up a lot of radiation, growing new toes and all that fun stuff. Mostly being melted at the molecular level in order to advance the realms of science. And I think that's a good thing to do. I don't know, somebody gotta take that risk so that we can all learn something new. We got one final object that we can dig off the planet right here, and I think it's a really good idea to do so. And so I'm gonna deactivate the turret, we're gonna pick up whatever that is. And this one right here, we actually already know that it's an electrical. Okay, we got a T-32 recovered. Let's go ahead and we will pull this back, and now that we're clear, we will recall the drone. It'll come back to the ship, we'll exit the link because we don't really need to worry about that so far. And let's take a time to look at the map. So we started off with our launch zone right here. I don't know if I can move that around or anything like that, I assume I can do it. Once the rover gets back to the ship, maybe I can use the computer systems to like, put that somewhere. It's gonna be at least like a minute and a half before the ship gets back. But I feel like it's a good opportunity for me to figure out how irradiated I am. You gotta check in with the auto dock every now and again, just to make sure that like, that extra eyeball or that extra wiener that you've been growing is not malignant. Now we have white blood cell counts have been reduced, scattered cellular damage, measurable damage to bone marrow, good lord. Okay, authorize the treatment. Let's get that back down. We're at 600 something right now. I don't know anything about radiology or anything like that, but like, I'm a little, I'm a little worried about it. All available radiation treatment has been applied. Okay. I mean, our, our heart rate seems pretty bad on the EKG, but maybe we just have really bad cardiovascular health. It's a possibility. Maybe we just don't get enough exercise on the spaceship. I kind of want to know what the EVA suit does, but... What does, the eight, what, what does that do for me? Put on the EVA suit. I want to find out. It's a little janky looking. Oh, we just step in through the backpack. Gotcha. And so, how does the EVA suit work? Will it protect me from, like, radiation? I would assume that it does, like a space suit without a lead lining. Seems like the kind of thing that you really wouldn't even want to wear. And so, inside the closet, I can kind of just fly around. I wonder if this midi- I wonder if this gets rid of radiation for a little while. Like, it's got battery power or whatever. What can I- can I activate this thing while I'm inside of here? Let's reset our landing zone. Reverting- I wonder if that didn't- it looks like it moved it over to the right a little bit. Didn't it? Because I think we landed right here before. I'm curious how that works. Like, I don't know. It's just chilling right now inside of there, so... I don't know, maybe exit the link? Hmm. I have no idea. I'm inside my EVA suit though, because I'm a little bit worried about radiation. I don't want to die this way. It feels unfair. We have a couple of research projects we can play around with while we wait. At the PCX, we've got a 662J, we've got an electrical 75T, and we've got a... Yeah, just bulk unload the rover, it doesn't even matter. Let's put that over there too, and then we're going to tell these to chain research. So let's jump on in here, let's research everything. Oh, it can do them all simultaneously? Holy sweet Jesus! I thought you had to do one at a time! Is it splitting processing power between all of them, or is it just- Oh my god. Oh my god. I feel like such an idiot. I didn't even know you could do this! This is so awesome! I learned a new thing today. I thought Research All was just gonna do them like- I don't know. I thought it was gonna do them all in iterative order. It was just gonna start from the top or something like that. I guess that's what I get for assuming. That's what I get for assuming. I don't have any things to equip right now in our rover. Can I go inside of here, like, while I've got the suit on? What happens if I go in here while I've got the EVA suit on? Does it get mad at me? It's like, you're a dick, stop doing what you're doing, you can't get inside of here. Medical scanner unable to image, please remove your outer garment. Okay. I'm wondering if you can't just wear the EVA suit for the beginning part of the game. I also needed to check on atmospherics and figure out what happened there. So in atmospherics, we're at 93% oxygen, argon, gas reserves are looking okay. What does emergency refill do? Like, do I just like click an area? Oh, look at that, I can control the airlocks. Cool. That's pretty radical. I like that, I can control all the doors inside of here. That's pretty rad. We've got valves closed, air valves normal. Got refill suit tank. Okay. 
I mean, our suit doesn't really need anything right now. I'm keeping the suit on. I'm keeping the suit on for a minute. I've got my, I've got my suspicions that maybe the suit is what I'm supposed to be wearing whenever I, can I go outside? Let's go look and see if we can go outside. We're waiting on research anyways. I want to see if this is possible. So in the airlock, and we'll close that down. And open? Oh shit, son, it tried to, it tried to run me out. So it looks like I've got very limited propulsion while I'm out here. I don't know what the point is of going outside the ship. Maybe like we impact with things or something like, I don't know, touches on us. This is kind of horrifying though. Like in a weird way, isn't this kind of creepy knowing that you're just like hanging over the precipice and like you could just float out into orbit like somewhere? It's a little terrifying. Like I don't like this at all. Like I am not the one. Like leave this to bigger and better minds, me thinkies. Let's go up for a second. And I'm going back inside the airlock. This is scary. I don't want to be in here. I don't want to be outside. Mm -mm. That was a deeply concerning feeling right there. I don't like it at all. I don't know if we need to repressurize that or anything, but I don't see like a repressurize button, so... I'll make sure all the airlocks are closed, but I can't guarantee... Let's go back the way we came, so I have to open up more airlocks than necessary. Okay, so research should be done over here. Let's have a look at it. So, laboratory is ready. This device is a high-energy laser, capable of delivering a high-energy output in a very short duty cycle. The beam will attenuate through the atmosphere, resulting in reduced damage over distance. Operation of this weapon is highly conspicuous. Damage output is lower than initially estimated. The device is remarkably efficient and consumes an unusually small amount of electrical power. Cool. We've got a flame projector. The purpose of this device is uncertain. It consists of a thermally insulated open-ended chamber ringed with unknown structures. When activated, it emits a high temperature cloud of conflagrating materials. The emission pressure is sufficient for efficient propulsion. Device should be used as an offensive weapon. Damage output is lower than initially estimated. This device consumes large amounts of power. We've got an arc repeater, so that's an offensive weapon. It's highly damaging, so it's basically what we already had. Well, this device can be adapted to operate as a video camera in the visible light spectrum. The lens configuration produces a telephoto effect with a relatively narrow field of view. We might have to play around with that. I'm kind of interested in seeing what the telescoping cam does. Let's move everything back around into our cargo areas. And we'll take the pulse laser. We're going to move that to the garage. Flame projector, I don't really care about. The arc repeater is worth 4500 the G97 telescopic cam, we'll put that inside of there as well. We've got a video camera right there, but I'm interested in playing around with the new telescoping cam just to see like what it does, what it do, what it do. Uh, do we have anything else inside of here? We've got a T32 right there, and that's pretty much it for research. Let's go ahead and kick this off and get it started. So research everything that we have on deck right now. It actually did 70% in one go. What is it? So initial, it's an engineered object, is predominantly mechanical in nature. Aren't most of the things we're picking up predominantly mechanical, though? I kind of feel like just about everything we're picking up is mechanical. Like, flamethrowers are mechanical, cameras are mechanical. Uh, further research indicates this is a conspicuous heat-radiating fins and contains thermostatic elements that react to temperature. Preliminary conjecture is that the device is thermal in nature. It's probably a dampener or something like that. We found a Stegosaurus back! Yay! Now we can put an adorable Stegosaurus back on our drone so it can walk around like Mmm! And it can make like Stegosaurus sounds. I'm so proud of you Stegosaurus bot. Stegabot. It is a light flamer. Apparently it's a weapon. It is relatively cool during operation and the object is particularly damaging. Okay, I just want the laser for right now. I'm a sucker for laser weaponry. I want lasers bad. So we found all of that stuff right there. We're in storage. I could probably throw some things into the cargo bay too, just to keep it safe. Let's move the rover to the garage. Close that off real fast. And now that we are all situated, let's put in the pulse laser and we'll see what that does to our energy supply. As you can see, it goes inside the little box right there. It sucks in. I love how everything in this game is kind of factorial-like, like when it does installations and stuff. Let's power it up and see what happens. It looks like we are good. Our power situation is bad, though. Okay, what does a power controller do? 
power control and distribution subsystem. It controls and prioritizes power flow between installed subsystems. It's powered on. Devices placed higher in the list will be given priority over rover devices put lower on the list. It replaces the default behavior during power shortages of available power being shared. So having that there determines what gets cut out if you run out of power. Okay, makes sense. Let's take the video camera off. Let's put the telescopic cam on here. That's probably just for zooming would be my thought. It's going to give us like a 4x view instead of what the normal video camera gives us, but might be worth checking out. Modification should be done very shortly. And so there it is. We have atrocious power situations going on. Let's have a look and see what the cam looks like when we fiddle with it. I am going to close off all these doors just in case the... Well, I forgot the one over there, but that's okay. Let's just not think about that for right now. Let's just not think about it. So communications link with the rover. Telescoping cam is right there. It actually looks like it gives us a better picture or maybe just a zoomed in picture. Until we launch out, we won't really know. Let's install the other camera on it so it can like kind of compare and figure out what the problem might be. Open that on up. I love how everything is like analog in this game too. Like you gotta push buttons. Like doors don't open when you press the E key. Like you've actually gotta do what you've gotta do. And so put the video camera in there. We'll move it higher on the prioritized list. Status display is pretty important. So we'll put that up there. Let's power that down for a minute. We've got a bad power situation. Okay. That works for me. Send the rover to the cargo bay. I suppose I could have just launched it, but... I don't know. I like the modification aspects of this game in a lot of ways, like playing around with an RC car. Looks like we're a little bit low on... Let's see if this actually affected our radiation intake. Let's take off the EVA suit and see what our radiation readings are looking like right now. I am actually curious about this. I want to know. Alright, so we've stepped out of the suit. It goes back to whatever it was doing previously. Uh, we go back this way. Launch the rover for me, por favor. And I will turn off this display over here. Because it tends to lag the game out when you get this display on. It tends to kill your frame rate, at least that's what I've noticed. Also, when you launch the drone, your frame rate tends to drop, but it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't drop to, like, unplayable levels. It goes from, like, 60 down to, like, 40. So it's not, you know, absolutely abysmal. Activate the auto dock. Let's see what it says. I want to know if the EVA suit is actually a reliable way to make sure that you don't get irradiated. Or if it just makes matters worse. Uh, we have... Oof. No, we still got radiation going on, so the EVA suit does not protect from that. I tried! I tried to come up with a new situation and come up with a thing that might help. I don't know how long we're going to stay here, but I don't think we're going to be able to stay much longer. We've had a pretty good run, though. Like, I feel like things are going pretty well. Uh, establish a communications link. Let's see what's going on with it. Uh, status display is a little burned out right now. Turn off the telescoping cam. Put it right there on the status display. Video camera can go right there. And let's compare between the two. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a zoomed in camera. Okay. I'm curious to see what the laser does too. Put the laser right there. Laser is ready. Tur Ooh. Okay, so it just gives us like a little burst fire right there. Just zoop. Oh, we are out of battery power right now. Brutal. Okay. Let me wait for the battery to recharge real fast. I'm going to turn the laser off so that we gain energy a little bit faster. Kill off everything that's not necessary for everything to be working and just kind of let it do its thing for right now. Manipulator arms are not intensely important until we start finding loot, so... Meh. So where am I right now? Let's have a look at the survey map. I need to be like in unexplored territory before I feel like this is going to be a worthwhile thing to do. It's a little quiet. It's a little spooky with the it's a little spooky with the uh, microphone turned off. I don't know, man. I don't like floating around where it's like 
pitch black silent, you know what I mean? Uh, with the telescoping camera. Put you right there. It looks like over this way. I don't see anything that looks intensely hostile, but then again, I don't know. Uh, battery's at 0% right now. I will turn off the survey map so that we still stay charging. Now let's check out some of these little objects over here. So I don't know if those are just like stalagmites sticking up from the ground. They're not in a cave or whatever, but you know. What else would you use to describe those? I honestly don't see much else around here. There's a little tubey thing over here. Let's go have a look inside of that and see what we got going on. Yeah, we're definitely overdrawing our power right now, and I think that's going to hurt us. I don't know if you can pick up, like, a, a better battery at some point, but I do think that that's something that's probably worth investigating. Object in range. Manipulator is not ready. Okay, turn on the manipulator. Let's go ahead, and we'll grab whatever that is. So we got a 867R. Okay. I'll probably remove a lot of this stuff from the ship once we get back, just because it doesn't feel like we have the power subsystems in order to make it work. But I do feel pretty confident that, like, we're going to find an upgrade at some point. It's going to make our power grid a little bit better and make things easier. I see little spires over here that might be the remains of a building. I don't know. Let's go have a look. I'm going to try and keep the charges going on for right now. Although, those might be some kind of, like, large crystalline structures. Yeah. Those are, like, giant crystals that are around. Interestingly enough. Let's manipulate the turret a little bit. And, like, the bear that went over the mountain. Let's kind of see what we can see around here. That thing looks like something that's definitely lootable. So let's get over to this side and we'll see what it's got going on. So far we haven't seen anything deadly. I wonder if I can get a reticle or anything like that for my turret too. Nothing's tried to kill us though, so I suppose that's a good thing. Turn on the manipulator arms and let's pick that thing on up. So we've got a zero U-dub something. Okay. What do we dub it? I don't know what we dub it. We dub it a U-dub something, though. Let's turn off the manipulator arms, and that's pretty much all I can afford to have off right now. With the survey map, where exactly are we right now? Oh, survey map's already where it needs to be. Survey map can go over there. Let's turn that on. It looks like we're looping back around the mountain range that was right there in between our landing zone and all the other areas, and so we've done kind of a big circle right now. I think that's okay, though. I think that's okay. We got an object nearby. Let's get up close to it. Turn on the manipulators. Where is the object? It's hiding. It's trying to hide from me. It's like, no, please do not take me back to space. I'm like, I will take you back to space when I want to take you back to space, object. All right, let's recall this thing on back, and we will exit the link right there. And in a minute or so, it should be back inside the cargo bay. I'm going to go check on my radiation situation because I'm really starting to think that maybe we're not that healthy. Come on, good health. Good health and prosper, or bad health and death? Like, you'd think they would radiation shield the ship a little bit better. They can't be selling this ship to people and allowing them to go out into space if you're just going to let me get irradiated. Like, what's the point there? Like, you're just going to send me out to space and let me get irradiated? Like, I don't know. Radiation plate the ship better. Like, I would think that in the future where we're capable of warp travel, we would be able to make this stuff happen. Like, this would be a non-factor. But the game's like, nah, son. Enjoy being irradiated. Are you coming back yet, little ship drone thing? Are you here? Where are you? Ship drone, how long do they have? Oh, it's docking right now. Hello, little ship. Stacy, how was your trip? Was it good? Were things taken care of? Oh, it actually put like a little laser cannon with a telescoping lens on top of there. 
That's so legit! I never noticed it actually adds stuff to the little rover, like, physically. I thought it was just inside the ship. It put a little lens on it, and it put a little laser cannon on right there. Oh my god, every time I play this game, I like it more and more. That's legit. I like that. That's super badass. Alright, so let's take these back over to here. We'll get those started. I need to send this over to the garage bay so that we can uninstall some of these devices that are getting us in trouble. I don't think that we need a telescoping lens on top of our laser cannon turret. Like, it looks cool, but I just don't think we're we're utilizing that the way that we should be utilizing that. Now, with this stuff right here, let's go ahead and kick off some research right there. Looks like, I don't know if previous research... Let's see here. We don't have any assessments so far. I don't know if previous researches help out with later researches because what I see is that sometimes they start at like 40% or 70% or 1% or whatever, but it's hard to tell. This one right here is by far winning the race. Initial research is that it's a sensor of some kind. Okay, we could definitely use a more power efficient camera, so I'll take it. Or something with like an HD lens on it. At least get us up to 720p or something, you know. Like, I'm not being greedy right now. I just want that thing to be available so that we can make it happen, Captain. That's all that I want, is just something to make it a little bit, you know, better. Uh, while the research is being done, I guess we'll do the modifications on our rover. I want the pulse laser to stay. I want the telescopic cam to come off. We weren't really even using it anyways, but reserve battery should be pretty high on the priorities list. Until we get attacked, I'm not going to keep the laser on it either. Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like we need it. If we're not actively being shot at, like in a hot landing zone, I'm just going to keep more space for items. We'll recall the second we see an enemy. And then once we feel like we're safe, we'll come back, get the gun, relaunch, and go fight whatever it is. That's assuming I'm going to have the opportunity to do something complicated like that, but... Launch the rover. Yeah, put the, lo put the rover back down on the planet real fast. Let's see here. We're on phase three. So phase two for this guy. This device is electrical in nature. Uh, this is also an electrical device. And so we've got a number of things going on. I don't know how long this is going to take, so let's suspend the research right there. That does research faster if you're not doing every project at once, though. So, you know, things to think about while you're settling on in. Hmm. All right, well... Kind of an interesting situation to find ourselves in. Let's have a look at our research real fast while we wait. So that's done. It's an arrow indicator. Operating via unknown means, this device appears to indicate a bearing on a fixed point on the planetary surface. The significance of this point in space, if any, is entirely unknown. The device also provides compass orientation. Okay, I wonder if that fixed point is important. This game does have a storyline. As you explore the planet, you're going to find more and more stuff as you run around. And I've heard that you can find, like, audio logs and voice logs and stuff like that that are around, that are, like, down on the planet, and you can find out what happened here, but I don't know the truth of the whole thing. I assume it's probably a good idea that we get out here and we get a little bit further on into the planet and sort of verify... We've got another thing over here. We are draining at 3%. I can live with that. That's no biggie. Is that thing moving? That thing looks like it's moving. Pick up whatever the object is, and then focus the turret. I see a spider bot over there. Ah! I've been shot at! It's firing missiles at me! Oh no! Oh my god, it missed with that shot. That thing is way off. That thing needs to put its glasses on. I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't play with this noise. Run, little rover! You're too beautiful to be shot to pieces! Run, you beautiful little bastard! Run! Oh, it's a surge capacitor. That might allow us to have more electrical properties on our little rover. Seems possible. We got an M99. That sounds like a gun. Doesn't it sound like a gun, though? Oh, maybe we'll be able to get like a mass accelerator or something like that. Just da 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 da. Ooh, that's the kind of thing that I need. Splatty loves himself some DACA. He is an orc at heart. He is very much an orc at heart. Splattercat loves shooting badass, explodey things. I will take the turret and let's make sure that it's not following us. Does the spider bot fall? Oh, it's still shooting. It is still 100% still shooting at us. I can barely make it out through like the random 
crispy signal we got going on right now. But it's going to have to... D oh, Christ. What was that thing? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's coming back. Oh, no, 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 no. Please don't bomb me. Please don't bomb me. I think my survey map got shot. It's turning yellow. Oh, what is that object? Recall, recall, recall. Exit the link, exit the link. Woo, I don't think exiting the link is going to save us right there. But I got scared, you guys. I got scared. We got shot at and then a jet fighter took off. We were being attacked by some weird looking MiG thing. I'm not trying to have that kind of life happen. We found the Russians in outer space. And I don't mess with the Russians. Nope. I don't play around with that noise. Not for a second. If the Spetsnaz is going to come after somebody, it's not going to be me. I stay well up and off the FSB's radar. No, thank you. Uh, the surge capacitor. This power storage device operates as a capacitor, able to charge and discharge very rapidly. The overall storage capacity is kind of compromised in order to accommodate fast transient peaks of inbound and outbound charge. The particular device is relatively energy inefficient, requiring additional power to charge. This device appears to have a lower storage capacity than was estimated. Okay, so its maximum charge rate is 28.64. It can discharge pretty fast. Its storage capacity is 2 units. How does that compare to the battery that we already have sitting around in our stuff? I don't know. Research that thing last. Get that thing done. And as soon as the rover comes in, we'll queue up a little bit more. I want to know what that thing is, though, that's flickering and freaking out. Medbay is offline reboot. Okay, I will. I'll reboot that in just a minute. So we've got the surge capacitor right there. We've got the arrow indicator. Power storage thing is being worked on. Let's move that over to there. And let's do a med diagnostic real fast. Oh, yeah, it's not working. We've got a system crash over here. It's probably not good for my long-term lack of radiation, but let's have a look and see if we can get this thing rebooted. Yeah, force the reboot on medical. There we go. Let's go watch the reboot process. For some reason, it fascinates me and it makes me happy. Like, I like the fact that they went through and they actually did, like, a reboot process on all the terminals and whatnot. I wonder if you can actually get into the boot menu or whatever. Like, if you can get over here fast enough and click on the monitor and hit escape or delete or whatever. We should try. I'll probably try it a little bit later on. But I hope you guys are liking this game. I think this game is super swell. I think it's a lot of fun. And so, like, it's not like a, you know... It's not a fast-paced run and gun them, shoot them, destroy them, blast them, gore them, or anything like that. But it is a fun little title. Now, we have ulcerated lesions in our gastrointestinal tract and mucosal bleeding. That's probably bad. That sounds like something that's probably really bad for me. I don't think we want mucosal bleeding, and I don't think that we want anything else either. Uh, deactivate the auto dock for me. And let's move the research object over. And I just want to find out what that is. That's all I want to do, and then we can call it quits on this. We don't have to play anymore if I can figure out what this is. A load bank. What does a load bank do? It does not store electrical current, it dis dissipates it. The device is a resistive load bank capable of absorbing significant quantities of output power. It generates heat as a byproduct. So it has base power and then it powers using heat? So it's a power storage device. But it kills off like excess power maybe? You can have too much power generation and so you've got to have something that stifles the rest of it? I don't know. Let's wait and watch for this research to get done. I want to find out. So here's a fun little tidbit of information. The Intermediate T2 report on this thing. It's taken like 45 minutes to research this thing, no lie. It's taking forever. Uh, the research facility is unable to explain the properties exhibited by this sample. Scientific measurements yield anomalous results. Research self-check and calibration sequences indicate lab is in good working order. Sample is of anomalous nature. Further research possible. Conjecture at present, impossible. So our little buddy is 1% away from done right now. I want to know what this thing is. I'm curious. I've heard through the grapevine that this game has like event horizon type stuff that happens when you loot certain things. Where like the ship will rearrange itself or all the lights will flicker red. Or like the terminals. It's called a gap hemisphere. Sample is comprised of four hemispherical objects in a tetrahedron configuration. Separated by one half of their radius. Here, research everything else while I'm reading. There you go. 
These objects are not connected, yet they remain rigidly in formation as though a single object. Mechanical force was available to research facility cannot increase or decrease the disk between hemispheres. The hemispheres will spin about their central axis without measurable friction. Mechanical probes may be passed through the gaps without interference. Method of operation unknown. Purpose unknown. Worth 6,000 credits, though. I mean, it can't be that bad if it's worth that much money, can it? That's worth, like, a goddamn fortune. So, might be worth checking out. Let's throw this thing in the cargo bay, and I wanted to show you guys the ending of the game, too. Depending on what you do in the game, you get kind of like a Sid Meier's Pirate-style ending to the game. And while I don't think we need to quit the game just yet, I'm going to do it anyways, because this is the last episode, and I want you guys to see how that system functions. But it seems as though we've stumbled across some very real weirdness out in the depths of space. And that worries me. That makes me feel like something might be going very, very wrong. We've got a forward radar right here. It measures time delay, and so it's thermally efficient. It uses an unusually small amount of electrical power. And it's an active emitter, which means other sensors can detect us when we're using it. Okay, my radiation levels are pretty bad right now, too. It took almost 45 minutes for this thing to scan. It took forever. And so we soaked a lot of radiation while waiting. Like, a lot, a lot of radiation while waiting. Like, loads of radiation while waiting. This is an M99 laser. Let's go get ourselves checked out by the auto dock real fast before we give this thing the finger and bail on out. But I'm pretty sure we're going to die. You can actively die on your way back to the main space station if your radiation levels are too high. So, keep that in mind. Uh, we're not looking so good. But I don't know, maybe we'll pull through? I don't know what to think about it. We might be alright. We'll have to wait and see. I've heard by reading on the forums that you should bail out around 2S uh, radiation damage. That thing's not going to be done for a while, but there was one feature that I didn't show you guys in this game. There's actually, inside your bunk, there's a bunk terminal over here. And our character leaves logs, essentially, in here of what they've done. Uh, there's all kinds of these things. Like, there's loads and loads and loads. Uh, the reason we came to the planet from reading through all these is because we detected a radioactive signature that was on the planet that was really, really distinct and contained. And so we... My lights are flickering and it worries me. Oh, that's cool. It actually tells you what tests it's running on it right over there. So it looks like we got ourselves a badass laser before we bailed out. I'm okay with that. We've got a mini laser. Uh, reduced damage over distance. Remarkably efficient. Very small amounts of power. Particularly damaging. So it does 6 damage with 100. Atmospherics terminal is offline. Okay. Let's go deal with atmospherics, I guess, before we get out of here. Life support's offline. Yeah, force a reboot right there and force a reboot right there. And let's get life support back up and running. I'm a little worried about... Why are the lights flickering? I don't feel good about this. Are we on a different side of the planet right now? Wasn't the planet on the other side of the ship? Uh, The planet was over there. Why is the planet over here now? Uh-oh. I don't know how I feel about any of that. Let's load everything up in cargo and get the hell out of here. I feel like weird things are happening. And I don't want to be present when they get too weird. Let's just leave. Alright, so we're bracing for thrust, and this is essentially the ending of the game. I have it from the developer that there's like 24 different endings that you can get, including weird objects you pick up on the planet that change what happens when you get back to the station. We might die on the way from radiation. I don't really know. I suppose we'll find out. Uh, let's see here. Flick a flask explored the planet's surface at some length, mapping portions of the craggy mesa she discovered at the landing site. She looted 14 artifacts from derelicts on the surface and made extensive use of the research lab, substantially advancing her understanding of several alien technologies. Her studies of alien devices lean towards power storage technology. The most value we got is a gap hemisphere worth 5,600. In all, collected treasures were worth a total of 46,000 credits. In the course of her encounter, she exposed herself to a dangerous dose of hard radiation. 
Upon returning to Tantalorn Station, she determined after medical consultation that she would strongly consider retirement from active spacer duty in order to avoid further background radiation exposure. Luckily, after selling the cargo she recovered, she found herself in a financial position where retirement was a real possibility. Flick of Flask made a name for herself for her historic discovery and also earned a footnote as an artist. She paints scenes of the world she discovered, sometimes with crumbling derelict hulks she found there. Other times, she paints it as she imagines it might have looked. This game is called Scavenger SV4. You should definitely check it out. Leave a like on this video if you liked what you saw. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle, where I show off indie games every single day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. And hi-do, everybody. It wasn't an evil artifact after all. It was a good artifact that made me super rich.